What's up, everybody? What's good, family? And welcome back to another episode is, of Is, is This, this Gonna, gonna cause, cause an Argument? argument? You, you gotta wait until I get ready well, to just, say it. Well, you was taking too long. No, you, you, you be excited, jumping too right? fast. You be jumping too fast. Got our, got our second guest ever, officially. <laughs> officially. I'm excited. So this is a weekly podcast where I, uh, Angel Akita Moore, also known as That Chick Angel, hosted with her husband of almost 13 years. Well, why am I talking about myself in third person? My husband of almost 13 years. People know years. what I'm dealing with. Tell them who you are, baby. You got nervous. Husband. I was going to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a husband of almost 13 years. Marcus Tanksley, the other host of This Is Gonna Cause an Argument. And we talk about everything, whether it be current, current situations, whether it be yes. relationships, whether it be family that you don't like, family that you do like. And, or something that um, pissed Marcus off, pissed me off or him off. We're going to yeah. talk about it. And um, today we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful couple that Y'all decided excited. Yeah. to allow us to interview them and be a part of this conversation. Yeah, they are friends, but it's those friends is like, I don't want to bug them, though. <laughs> <laughs> the newlyweds, Keith Chapman and Kelly McGrary. Nice. Oh, we need like a round of applause button. Yes. Clap it up. Yeah. Clap it up. Clap it up. How y'all doing Here over there? Hi. What up? Y'all holding right. together? Y'all, y'all doing all right? We doing all right. You doing, uh, all, doing right? all right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we are... There's so many, many uh, blessings to count, obviously, but um, all of that, uh, you know, this is a this is a major moment. This is a major moment that we are yeah. all living in and through, and it's um, bringing up a lot, mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Mars, like yeah. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. I have to. We forewarned you, though. We said, told you this would happen. <laughs> and action. <laughs> I have to say, Kelly, because I, I, I follow you like uh, the other millions of people that follow you on Instagram, and you answer people who uh, might be very, like, contrary or, you know, just have a different point of view. You answer them in such an... Such, loving such grace yes graceful life yeah. while also slicing their heads off there was one <laughs> word that you had put i can't even remember i had to read it three times to see if i could pronounce it correctly and i said <laughs> <laughs> this kelly just told this woman off and she don't even realize it but yeah. it's always <laughs> out of a place of like i'm going to educate you you can see my previous post um, <laughs> so you can understand better uh i'm just like I don't know how she does it. I, I I just be like, all right, I'm about to be the queen of the block. That's all I can do. Uh, but yes, I have to point that out. And, yeah. you know, everybody, you know, go ahead. You call it grace. Others may call it passive aggression. You know, it's six to one, half a dozen to the other. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's grace. It's grace. Um, but, uh, and Pete, well, how are you? You, you? you were like, Kelly, I'm gonna let you speak for us. You know, let like, Got to pass the baton. I'm I'm doing well. It's a you know interesting time like no other. Mm-hmm. Um, I always watch the news, but now I, I'm watching it. But if I was watching it 24 hours a day before, I'm now watching it 25 hours a day. Yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah. But it's uh, I think it's you know, hopefully a hopeful time because there's more um, engagement than ever before. Absolutely. And yeah. people are really, I mean, it, it just goes to show like the power of, of, of the video, you know, because as much as it doesn't do, you could you could beat the mess out of somebody and they'll act like it didn't happen. You yeah. know, when it's just video after video yeah. after video yeah. after video, which is unique to everybody, well, a, a larger groups, a larger amount of people focusing on it, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it, it, it feels like we're on our way to some change, but people got to stay on on point and yeah. active, and you know, vote, vote, vote. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is that, that level of consistency that um, I feel like we failed as a people to continue in the past. Mm-hmm. It's like something happens, and it's all, they always say, you know, we always tell each other we have such a short attention span. 
because something will happen. Everybody will be on it for like three weeks, and then all of a sudden they're back to TikTok or whatever they're doing. <laughs> and uh, that, and it, that, is, that is one of the incredible things about this moment, which I think makes that video even more powerful. And look, we are all artists and we are contributing, I think, in a very meaningful way when we do our art to the conversation. But there is something about the fact that there ain't no content right now and there's right. nothing to switch to channel two. You yeah. know? And and so the impact impact of that video or of the series of videos over the course of a very short period of time, um, which were unfortunately no different than so many videos we have seen over right. the last five, six, 10, 15, 175, 2,000 we, years. We've been right. watching that video since they got cameras. Yes, yes. right, you know? right, right, right. 92, Rodney King. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, and um, so it is really, it's really amazing to have that, this moment of pause where it's like, yeah, we're gonna sit with this. We're gonna sit with this story in this video and reckon with it in a really, <laughs> In a hopefully meaningful way. Right. Yeah. yeah. E even it goes Emmett Till. At least we have a photographic proof of the right. brutality. Right. 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 No, it is. There's something you can feel like a, a shift for the first time. Yeah. Like before, you know, with uh, with all the other deaths that have happened mm -hmm. prior to now, there was a definite like, mm -hmm. you know, jolt that happened. But there was there's something about this one. One, I would say, and this actually is a perfect segment into our, uh, a perfect segue into our next segment, which is what's got you in your feelings. Um, uh, a segment that me and Marcus do to discuss like what's got us feeling some kind of way and what's got us feeling good. Something that actually has had me feeling good during this like dark time that, but that I know that we're going to come out of um, is seeing the support from all over the world yeah and not just because you think about you know you think about the fact that there I, we have had to live in a society as black americans where we've had to try to thrive and strive in spite of what we know other people might think about us or how people feel about us right and it's just like a it's a thing that we just do it's it's not even a thing we acknowledge half of the time we just do what we do so it was so, uh, it made me aware that I didn't know what it felt like to be cared about by so many people. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And that it hit me. I didn't realize that I had missed that feeling until I saw all around the world, people caring about me. And I was like, oh, I yeah. didn't know that I and needed that. I had a similar moment before, you know, uh, you referring to the video that I put up, because mm -hmm. I had a similar moment where um, it was two different videos I saw where there were like, I don't know if it was a chief or a captain of police, and they joined in with the crowd, and they started marching and chanting and giving speeches, joining in with the crowd. And I was like, that's like tear, like that's, that will, that's the type of stuff that will break me down on top of, seeing everybody across the world. When you see Syria, Iran, Iraq, yeah. people holding up Black Lives Matter, I'm like, oh my God. And that's, it literally just feels like the first time it's like, no, so we're not in this alone. We're not by ourselves on this. People do see it. And we're not talking to like a brick wall. Mm -hmm. right. um, well, go, uh, I'm so, I, I saw Kelly. I did not mean to like <laughs> yank you into <laughs> a bit of emotion, but um, uh, uh, that's what that's the one thing out of this that mm -hmm. I did not realize I needed until I saw it. I was like, oh, is that what this feels like for someone to be like, it's you know what, little sis, we care about you. We care about your family. It's not just you by you all by yourselves trying mm -hmm. to fight. It's not David and Goliath. Like you are now a giant too. Yes. We have you on our shoulders. You get what I'm right. saying? Um, so what's got y'all, if there's anything, what's got y'all feeling good? I mean, for me, it, it's very much the same thing. I, I think that like a week ago, literally a week ago, um, 
we went on a social distance family hike with our <laughs> other family members uh, yeah. down here. And then we came home to watch the news and it was just like, you know, Saturday afternoon. So this, that was only one week ago. And um, that day I was like, I really was feeling down because I, you know, I thought, what's going to be different this time? What's going to be different this time? And I, and then and the consistency of the the engagement of people um, who don't just look like us, you know, and the the uh, the meaningful conversations we're having around the work that we can do um, is that it is really different, and that really does give me hope. It really does, and it's funny. You know, when you were talking about the international response, uh, Pete and I um, and our good friends, Aya Cash and, and Josh Alexander, we traveled to um, Paris for mm -hmm. New Year's. And uh, one of the things that we did was um, take this Black Paris tour. Mm -hmm. And I, this is going to sound as bougie as, as, as it can be, but more, I did, more, more than just traveling to Paris. I know. I'm like, you are <laughs> know, and a good bougie. We went to Paris I'm like, for well, New Year. Well, we went to Palmville. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we went Lancaster for New Year. Uh, yes, I know. I know. But look, it's going to get worse. I've been to Paris many times. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, I feel of it. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I had never encountered, um, we did this, a Black Paris tour. Mm -hmm. And our tour guide did not just um, take us to the sites of historic events in Paris, you know, that involved Black people, but he was breaking down, like, France's particular um, strange relationship to racism and colonialism in a way that I have never ever heard any Europeans reckon with European racism before. Oh, wow. It's like something is different. Something is different. There is um there is a shift in consciousness taking mm -hmm. place and I and that gives me hope. That gives me tremendous hope. Yeah, yeah. P anything you want to add that's got you feeling good? Because we all know what's got us feeling bad. Like I don't think anybody has any <laughs> <laughs> any uh, like any other thing but is there anything that's got you feeling like you know what um pardon if I'm, I'm just like this dog is is digging is trying to hide a bone everywhere in this room so that's it's why all I'm good <laughs> um, you know all, all the stuff i used to have that i used to use when i used to work just laying huh? around on the floor yeah. um, <laughs> so i'm like don't rip my papers up right but, uh you know i think that um you know, I think the positive, when you think about returning to the world and whatever normal will be moving forward, mm -hmm. you know, it looks like, I feel like we're all going to go back to that with new skills and a new outlook. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But like, you know, I was talking to a, a buddy of mine. I was like, yo, like after this, it's like, he was just, just go to everybody's house. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everybody, yeah. like, mastering their cooking game you know dudes yeah. like cigars marcus i don't know if you smoke cigars but you know i think you do. i got i got some cubans right here beside me man right. <laughs> <laughs> let's link up and do that you know what i mean and like let's just chop it up and like and 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 enjoy each other yeah um, in ways that you know particularly in la too i think it's kind of like you know i see you on your birthday because otherwise I don't drive to that part of town. You know what I mean? Right, right. you're right, you're right. I think, I think there'll be more like community and yeah. and maybe uh, hopefully more uh, honest conversation around many things because, mm, yeah. you know, it's a, um, it, it, man, what you kind of see, there's so many different viewpoints around, around this, around race, even around racism within the black community. Um, that I think it's important that on all levels people begin to kind of share where they're coming from uh, so there can be a unified understanding uh, even if folks are approaching it from different angles. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a different way that we that we socialize now that we've been deprived of it, mm -hmm. that it's not going, it's no longer going to be just 
Uh, yeah, I had texted you. Yeah, how you been? But like actually wanting to put hands on like people and look in their face, actually feel there's like uh, a vibe between one another and not just be okay with, oh yeah, I saw what you were doing on Instagram. Right. That was great. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Before it's like it was taken for granted. Oh, I can see them anytime I want to. Yeah. yeah. But you know, but and, and I'm going to make it that one time of year, yeah. you know, and it'll be fine. Right, right. Well, we're going we're gonna, to uh, lighten it up uh, with the topic of the day. And I think you all are going to bless so many people because we can't bless them in this way. Uh, <laughs> Marcus and I, uh, as we said before, we've been together. We've been married for, not, for 13 years almost, been together for like 16. So the dating scene of the 2000s we don't really of the the where we're at in 2000s we don't really know what that yeah. was like we only know what we hear yeah what we friends. hear <laughs> what we hear and like we've got a lot of friends that are just like god dang it am i ever gonna find somebody so i want to kind of talk about two different things with you all is like what was it like coming out of the dating scene and what has it been like to be a married couple in this time? Not just in this time, like, I don't mean like politically and socially, but like, I feel like it's so different. Me and Marcus- Out of the like, let me get, uh, let me go get her number and we gonna go out on a date versus, um, you know, there, there's a lot of just internet chat meets. <laughs> Hookups. Um, and we're like, yeah, we don't know how that happens, but people seem to do it and they flourish at it. Not now that we try and like, hey, so, Pete Kelly, how many scallywags did you have for you? <laughs> no, it's, it's more so of like, yeah, we'll, we'll lead it. It's like, how do you so navigate, for, I guess? Yeah, so first, uh, give us, if you don't mind, like a backstory of what was it like prior to you all meeting each other for your like, were you not even focused on it? Because I know both of you all have, for those of y'all who don't know, um, Kelly is a very well-known actress. I'm sure all of y'all know her by her face. She's, uh, and even before your fame and success, you have been working as a serious actress in the theater. And then the fact that you lived, the, the bougiest of them all is not Paris. It's the fact that you decided, I'm going to live in Spain and work on a farm. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> was so far from bougie. I mean, we could talk about that. That was far from bougie. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know how this sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Pete is a phenomenal, phenomenal director that I personally have gotten to work with twice. Um, so they're both in the Hollywood oh. industry, just to kind of give you a little backdrop on. Like, yeah, I've said it on some of Pete's classes. I'm like, have no desire to be a director. I'm like, watching it like. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can grasp any of this. <laughs> like, but I'm gonna listen anyway. This I'm is intriguing. Listen. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> now I'm looking at movies different. Like that's all messed up. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining my favorite movies, man. <laughs> so, it does change your perspective. That's funny. I'm assuming both of you all were focused on your careers, but were you all even thinking about like? I am still also trying to find that someone that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Take it away. I mean, what was think, it like? I think, so I remember, I remember one of my friends after like, I graduated NYU in 99. Um, and one of my good friends graduated a year after me and then moved to Atlanta. And I remember uh, like when Black Planet kind of started taking off. <laughs> yes. You know, like, you know, like Black Planet was, was there was there was the community aspect of it uh -huh. and then there was like the uh uh online um yeah. red light <laughs> you know aspect of it and uh -huh. so and that was so I, that was kind of like man like it the the ease with which that has facilitated people to connect mm -hmm. and people to be kind of honest at least about their in well, some people, because I think I think it's just another, I think it's just another ground upon which people could either be direct, which some people are in real life, or as fake as they are in real life, and they, right. like just in in the curation of their picture and the and the and what they like to say about themselves. Mm -hmm. It's the Chris Rock like 
meet my representative, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, but like by the time we met, I was definitely aware of like the type of person that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily actively looking for it, uh -huh. but I, I honestly think that's kind of the combination um, of of like qualities. That's I don't I don't know if that's quality. I think I think those two things in in tandem kind of in look in, in relationships are what you kind of need. Yeah. Like you know you're looking for something, you know what that thing might be uh you know you're looking for something, you know who that person might be. And I think the third part is you're doing what you want to do that makes you happy. So mm -hmm. then you'll hopefully meet someone that you've kind of been looking for while doing what you like and what makes you happy. And then in turn, if they're doing the same thing, then you're kind of going to have a handshake of, of, of like similarity, if that makes sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, you know, we met when I was uh, out here shadowing on TV programs. I shadowed on like 10 different shows. I went through four director programs because uh, it's hard for uh, a, a black male, female to get a job in, in television. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was on, I was like singularly focused on that, knowing that I had a kind of type of person in mind and I'm shadowing uh, another great director and Zinga Stewart uh, on Grey's Anatomy. And then I meet this person here, you know? <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's what, okay, so that explains why it might be harder these days. That's what you said is so very new age to be like, I'm doing what I like to do before I meet. He was, he was doing something kind of like what he liked to do. He didn't know what he wanted to do. You kind of. Oh, distress. He agrees completely. <laughs> you squinch your fingers. Boy. There we go. Oh, buddy. Go with your brothers, man. He's like, nope, I want to hear this conversation. <laughs> You know what? I think that is probably what, because, you know, I when people are like, it's just so hard out here. And I'd be like, I don't, I have no idea why. But I think because there's a lot of people that are yet to be doing what they want to do that is making them happy. So they're not even ready yeah. to even remotely bring anybody yeah, into we, that mess. Yeah, because we've had a conversation a lot of times. It's like we're men. We want to be in a specific place before bringing on what it is we want. Like we know what we want in a woman. We want we know what we want in life and goals, mm -hmm. and we want to meet that before we add the woman. And to where, as as I've matured, and as a lot of men mature, this is like actually. No, if you know what you want and that's good for you, that woman will only help you to that point and not <laughs> shoot you far past that. Right, right. Cause um, I feel like a lot of my female friends for themselves, they're like, he could come at any point in time in this journey yeah. in my life. I ain't got to be figured out yet. Just show up. Uh, so, <laughs> what, was it, what was it like for, uh, you know, you just gonna make him mad? Here, here, take, take a man. Here's me Sorry, let me get him quiet so everybody can hear you. You hurt him feelings. <laughs> his toy that was pitching his fingers. That's what he is. Okay, so Kelly, go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, it, we just really share that. It, it's so much of what Pete said really is true for me too, which is that, I mean, I think for different reasons. I don't think I had. In my 20s, I did want to be loved and love someone, mm -hmm. but I was not very good at multitasking and I was very focused on my career, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it wasn't because I thought I needed to be in a certain place in my career before I could meet somebody, but I just, I, you know, look, I wasn't trying to be out at night. I was, I, cause I had to go to yoga in the morning so that I could like be ready for my audition. You know, like, I, was just, I just didn't, you know, have the, um, 
frankly, ambition that it takes to, to really be out in these streets like that. And I wasn't... Um, <laughs> it's a job to be in the streets, let me tell you. Yeah, that's a <laughs> it, good word for it. And it costs a lot of money. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I lived way, I lived in Manhattan, and I lived way uptown, and all the interesting people that I might want to meet, the young artists, the young professionals, whatever, they was downtown, and, I, you know, after uh, 11 o'clock, that A-train was not running express. No. So I was in the bed, you know, I was at home in the bed, you know, before that A train went local. So, you know, it was just <laughs> very, I, I had, I was very focused at that uh -huh. time. Mm. On top of which, you know, um, I, I did want to do some work on myself before mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know, inflicted myself on somebody. <laughs> oh, <laughs> never. <laughs> I had some work to do. But, it's funny because once I um, started working on Grey's Anatomy, that was the first time in my career that I wasn't looking for a job at the same time that I had a job. Because you know, uh, when you're doing plays, when you're doing guest starring here and there, it's like you're working, but you're still super duper hustling. Now, Grey's yeah. allowed me, like, I, I just had limitations. Like, I couldn't be out there looking for lots of different jobs. So. I had suddenly time for hobbies and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. more activism and, you know, meeting people. So no. that's what I got online. And that was, I mean, as discouraging of an exercise as anything I've ever done in my life. So um, you did online dating? I did. You yeah. did? How was that? Because I... I got off the scene right before online dating became like a strong like option and I was willing I, I was when me and him started dating speed dating was still a thing I was willing to do speed dating I was like that'll be I mean now with COVID I would never do it but like at that <laughs> at that time I was like this sounds really interesting and I we literally started dating the weekend before I was getting ready to try to go to a speed dating event but and, I'm online. And then her, her nose just exploded. It was wide open. She didn't know what to do. I'm going to smack her. <laughs> <laughs> um, Girl, I done hit the jackpot. I was like, yeah, you did. <laughs> He's such an ass. So, okay. So, uh, you did online. Did, did you do online dating too, Pete? I did not. No. He was like, he's like, I ain't got to do all that. See? I know. It's like, you know what we are? um no uh yeah so it was just like you know look oh god um online dating is racist <laughs> you know there's like oh, all yeah. these studies about how racist it was so or racist it is and 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 so i i first of all had very little interest and, mm -hmm. and you know, whatever, that might not be entirely attributed to racism, but we know that we can attribute some of it to that. Yes. And, um, yes. and, and, and so, so my experience was like, I had a lot of people who were sort of vaguely interested and wanted to be like my pen pal for mm. a little while, uh, waste my time with all this texting. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I would meet people and I just found that like, it just seemed totally inorganic to me. Um, and I didn't really know how to do that sort of, anybody I'd ever met that I dated before, we met through a shared experience of something, you know, I didn't meet them just to date them. And I, I, I never got good at just like meeting a stranger and being like, hey, let's go out on a date. You right. know? And some people are great at that and love that. And that just, it wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, but right before I met Pete, I had um, had like this epiphany um, about, you know, frankly, like a new strategy for being in relationship because I had had enough interactions where I was like, you know, there's one common denominator here about myself that I mm -hmm. want to try to, you know, be more conscious of and more mindful of in my interactions with somebody. So when I met Pete, I was like, he'll be an experiment. Let me see what happens. <laughs> I mean, I had no idea that, you know, we would actually really meaningfully connect. But I was like, 
here's a person that this might be a good uh, trial run on. I would be remiss not to give him my phone number. So let me <laughs> just like a scientific about it. Right. Um, and then of course, you know, he turned out to be wonderful. Yeah, he was like, I'm me. Like, <laughs> you ain't doing that. I'll give you pee. <laughs> so silly. So let's uh okay, so let's jump ahead then in you all's relationship. You all got married. Do you say you you all got married? Is it because you all believe in the the institution of marriage, the the concept of two people having a go at it? Is that or was it more so like I don't want to go back out into these streets again like i don't want to make an assumption that yeah, like <laughs> no <laughs> say well guess we might as well do this now <laughs> we ain't getting no younger yeah we ain't getting no younger we, we might as well, well do, do it, it. <laughs> yeah you know because there is a lot of i do i do feel like there's a uh there's a cynical point of view that exists around marriage that i don't it's not that i don't get it because when you look at how unsuccessful <laughs> he's looking at that and he's like what you talking about you, here take him um, don't be acting no fool with me boy <laughs> like i'm gonna go to sleep thank you um there is like a cynical attitude that can sometimes surround marriage which i get because most marriages are not successful so people are like well, why are we even pretending like this is a thing that we should strive for but I'm not sure, like, if for you all, was it a thing of, like, no, this, this, like, to be with you for the rest of my life feels right? Or was it truly, like, you know what, it's more of this makes sense. Like, this mm -hmm. is the next step. No, I mean, it definitely, for me, you know, was like, this is a remarkable and rare um person and experience relationship that we are having together and you know marriage is there to give you sort of a framework through which to continue building on that not that you can't do that outside of marriage but mm -hmm. you know I had never actually considered marriage before I thought long-term partnership is super great and weddings are cool and everything but you know that's a down payment on a house you know but uh you know when when he proposed it was very much like well yes you know if that's how we um want to proceed in this in this relationship then then i'm willing to, to do that mm -hmm. not because i feel any societal pressure, pressure. or uh -huh. you know nobody was looking i'm very fortunate in that like my parents neither of them no grandparent actually that's not true i did have a grandma who was like the first of you girls to get married i'll buy your wedding dress and <laughs> asked actually before uh, oh. uh, before she could but um but apart from that you know it was just you know we didn't have to i never really felt that pressure so it was really a my a like conscious choice to be like yes I would like to marry you, in fact. Do you think <laughs> not actually? That sounds delish. What about, was it, uh, since Pete, you proposed, what was it like for you? Because like she said, I feel like I know more people now that are like, you know what, just a long-term relationship. It doesn't have to be marriage. It doesn't have to be this uh, social construct. Mm -hmm. For you, though, like, what was it like that made you go, let me lock this down? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I wasn't running around myself, like, you know, can't wait for the day to get mm -hmm. married either. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that sometimes you, and you enter a situation, and, and for me, it was just like, it feels like, I think this is like where that institution would apply. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. um, and I also yeah. feel like, um, you know, every, to each their own, but I kind of don't get the point of the 40 year girlfriend. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, whatever works for you, but like, and 
also too in like legal aspects there are like right. things that yeah. are that are not like that you open yourself up to should something undesirable happen mm -hmm. you know uh mm -hmm. that, and unexpected you know sometimes that the legality of the um acknowledgement of the love and the relationship is an important thing which yeah. is what which is what i think you know um gay marriage was often right meaning for the the ability to be recognized as such mm -hmm. um and so yeah for me it was just like you know what like this is uh it feels like the right thing here um and i don't know what it is to be married but we'll figure it out absolutely we'll it. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a blessing to to not have that influence or that pressure from like you know a lot of people get it from their family from their friends it's like y'all been together for this long y'all because we got it constantly asking you know when y'all gonna get married you know when you gonna have kids it's like it's none of your business <laughs> and that's something we I had I never had any problem telling anybody that whether it was a, a parent. I don't think anybody's or, surprised that you didn't have problems telling <laughs> anybody surprised. But it was one of those it's like this is us and that's what um because of where we're from, like we're both we're our from, families from the south. Yeah, from the south. It's like that was a benefit for us of living out here because we didn't have that like we weren't immediately around everybody. Right. So we were able to escape, just be us and not have to worry about what everybody else is saying or doing. You know, they can call an ass and I'd be like, well, how's the weather? Yeah. Uh, just ignore it all together. It's like, none of your business. Like, don't worry about all of it. Where y'all from? I was born in Baltimore, but raised in Kentucky. Where yeah, he is I'm from. born and raised in Kentucky. <clears throat> I had to import him. So Kelly, you're one of the few that I know actually found someone here. I was like, I started dating out here and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go back and pick out something and yeah. bring it on back and see if he can survive out here. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> you moved out here? Did you, did you move out here to be together or did you move out here? Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. So I was uh, at the time, I was an electrician in Kentucky when we were dating and she was finishing up grad school. So out here. Out here. So with her program, she's either got to be your LA or New York, one of the two. With me, I could go anywhere and do what I do. So, yeah. and I wasn't in like I wasn't with the company or anything where it's like, oh no, I, I'm in it for the long run with these people. I gotta stay here. I'm like, no, nah, I'll, I'll move out there and see what's up. Yeah, I um, made it very clear. I was like, so you know, I'm not ever coming back here to live. So this is like, our I, long distance dating yeah. is long distance, but it'll it it'll never be you know close distance because I have relocated back to Kentucky. That's yeah, yeah and, gonna and at the time I was thinking like I can have a coastal boo. I'm good with that. Um, <laughs> but she was because at the same time as like when we first started dating, it wasn't like her mind was always like on like the five and ten year plan. And mine was just like, all right, yeah, we're gonna start dating and we're gonna be dating. We'll That's see where that goes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Marcus would have definitely been somebody with a 20 year girlfriend. It just been fine. Like, yeah. Yeah, it took uh, it took persuasion, a <laughs> couple of threats. I, know. <laughs> I was like, "What I'm not about to do? Let me tell you what. This is what I'm not about to do." And so, Angel, would you have liked to have the pressure, a little more family pressure, to to for no, him? I know he won't listen to them. I knew yeah. he just needed it from me. He needed to know that I would have. Listen, listen, sir. I was about to do some speed dating. I don't know what I might have found around them tables. So listen, they still got another match yeah. coming up. <laughs> a lot of people are like, well, go try it out. Let me, know. <laughs> Let me make sure you call me when you're done, though. Like, <laughs> you coming back here. Yeah. Uh, so what has it? What what is it like to be married now? You all are newlyweds. You just celebrated your one year anniversary. So you all still got that. Y'all still got the shine yeah. on y'all. Because I feel like y'all y'all like shiny. entered the married game like as goals. Right. Like it's like you are everybody like, else's goals. Yeah, it's like, single, that's like, what I'm trying Dash. to get. But y'all been together for 25 years, but I'm trying to get there though. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so what um, what is it like? Is it uh you know, yeah, just I'm not gonna even put any ideas in your head. What is it like? Hmm. Um, you know, it's uh, it's funny, it's 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 projects, right? Like I I, I I always think about how um, planning our wedding 
was such a fun experience and that I, I, you know, you hear that that's not really true for a lot of people, but like, you know, I, I, a long time ago, um, my sister passed down some wisdom that she got from a, like a friend's mom or something where it was like, marriage is, is it, it's a, you work on something together. You know, you have to sort of like have a, a, a mission. So for some people it's a business, for some people it's a family, for this or that. And, and planning our wedding was the first like project that we did together. And, mm-hmm. you know, we made early on, we couldn't keep it up the whole time, but in the beginning we made a Sunday date and we took ourselves to like a nice hotel and, nice. and sat outside with our iPad and some champagne and like made our spreadsheets and did our Pinterest boards together. And oh, bougie like, black people. Oh, look, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and, you know, it sort of set the foundation for, I think, you know, all future projects that we embark upon together to be like, we know how to do this. We know how to do even That's challenging and stressful stuff yeah. together in a way that is um, fun and supportive and has lightness and, and the communication and um, real, you know, a, a conflicts, uh, 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 not avoidance, what's the word? Conflict. Resolution. Conflict resolution, yes. Like conflict, uh, yeah, just avoidance, really. You know, not try, not to, not pushing each other's buttons and things like that. And so, you know. It was like it, doing an episode of TV. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel, he was like, just do this marriage. <laughs> this marriage is brought to you by the director. And so ongoingly, you know, I feel like, you know, it's, for me, in my in my head, it's it's the same thing. It's like, you know, I don't think about it ever consciously all the time. But it's like dinner tonight. We do. We're, we're gonna make it together and sit down together. And, you know, he uh, wrote a short film recently, and he invited me to be a consultant. We learned how to be um, uh, creative together in that way. We we're you know working on a a, a a real estate project together. So you know, it's like it feels like there's so many ways to enter into this um, partnership and. Well, I think, I think kind of what's underneath all of that is that it is, you know, probably the biggest business decision you'll ever make. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? While Absolutely. also being a, a, a personal decision and a spiritual decision and whatever else may come with it, it is, the most important partnership that you're going to have mm-hmm. um, because you, you can't just fire somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you also don't, don't go home uh, from, from the job, you know what right. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so um, it really is, I think like if people applied that much, or, you know, cause a lot of time, like folks who you kind of talk to about their relationships, like it, I don't want to turn people into robots, but they'll run through these emotional breakdowns of things. And then you'd be like, yeah, but you, you see that don't make no sense though. Right. Like, (laughs) like, why would you, if somebody did that to you at your job, Mm -hmm. you'd be like, I don't want to be on their team Mm -hmm. or they're fired or I go, I'm gonna go get a new job. But in this world, you find a way to rationalize it Mm -hmm. and, and say, but right. And then disregard the prior half hour of complaining you just went through, Mm -hmm. you know? And Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, open eyes and stepping into it with uh, really assessing yourself and then your partner and then like having, you know, it's like, if you're not moving toward the same goal, like that doesn't work anywhere, man. If you, if I'm I'm trying to throw, you know, Hail Marys and y'all just want to run the ball, like, yeah, right. somebody got to get traded right. uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. and that's uh, i think that sports metaphors i mean they're always good. they're often good um but you know we're on the same team that's what that's what marriage is like that's that's what it concretizes for me you know that's it's cool, like huh? it concretizes it baby makes it concrete See, that's what oh, she, be killing, she be killing folk on Instagram. I'm, I'm <laughs> she be throwing down. words like that. I'm writing these down. I'm not spelling them right, but I'm going to be using these all next week. <laughs> I, I, I never heard that conjugation of, of concrete. Well, um, but, uh, stick with me then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> stick um, with me. <laughs> no, but it's like, 
like this is you always remember that you are on the same team and mm -hmm. you're moving toward we're moving together toward our goals together. We're moving, I'm helping support him on the way to his goals. He's helping support me on, on the way to my goals. And anytime there's, you know, static or friction or a breakdown in communication, it's like, don't forget now. Call a timeout. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. on the same team. Yeah. yeah. Same team. You know, and Pete is so good at always reminding me of that personally, because I do get into, you know, I'll, I'll go into like combat mode and he'll be like, do you know that I'm 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 trying to that I'm I'm what I'm saying is supporting you. Like you don't have to immediately be on the defensive. It's like that's right, that's right. This is this is why we are married, you know, because yeah. mm -hmm. we are agreeing to go through this life together um, with love and support. So yeah, I, th I think it's so interesting because like to hear you all so we've literally said like a lot of the same exact things. It's like People ask us all the time, they see us as because, you know, I guess we have a lot of younger followers is so like, you know, we trying to get with you all, you know, 13 years, you guys seem like you still have fun. It's like, well, one, you have to like the person. Two, it's not just about all the fictional, whatever, you know, with all the vain reasons that you may initially end up dating, maybe, but you actually have to like that person. Mm -hmm. It's yes. a partnership. It is a business contract. It is knowing your weak points, and your strong points and knowing theirs and knowing when the one person should step up over the other. Um, and it's like the successful, the successful and sought after relationships, like which you may want to image yours out after they all sound the same, ver same as the ones that are failures. Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, it's like all similar. It's like this, this and that didn't work. And y'all all, all kind of talk the same, but these seem very, Oh, okay. You know, I was just saying, yeah, the successful and the non-successful yeah. sound alike in their groups. Yeah. Um, I literally was oh, just, yeah. uh I was talking to Yeah, see I couldn't articulate that. <laughs> I was like <laughs> I was in there. I was I like, okay. Uh, me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was drawing the visual and I was like, Oh, okay, I need to scoop that over yeah. there. Now I know what he's saying. I got it now. Everybody's like, bless his heart, he's figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally saying on a live yesterday where we were, uh, I use the, I don't use the term soulmates. I use purpose mates. And they were asking me yeah. why, because for me, it gives me an action inside of my marriage. Soulmates makes it feel like there's this other thing that is tying us together, mm -hmm. where if that was the case, then why does it come untied for so many people where when I use purpose mates because it gives me an action. Even if we're not getting along for some reason, I know my action as his wife is to help him in his purpose. He knows his action as my husband is to help me in my purpose. And we can get through whatever conflict we're going through. Mm -hmm. We'll eventually start vibing again. But even if the vibe dwindles for a little bit because of whatever, whether it be outside stress, whether it just be, I had a baby and my emotions or my hormones ain't where they supposed to be at yet. I still know that I have agreed to 100%, whatever that purpose is in your life, fully support it and help you get there and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean. That. I love that framing. Yes, because being a soulmate seems so kind of like, ethereal and yes. like you just yeah. can't really put your finger on it but you gotta be able to put your finger on something because, <laughs> you know it's it's day to day when people say it's work that's the work you have to know what the job is yeah you know? right. it doesn't mean like oh it's a struggle although sometimes surely it can be you know right. but it means that like it's active you know yeah. the way that you that you love each other and support each other is an act of yeah. i love that purpose. yeah I yeah. feel like it's part of that fairy tale thing. It's like, you know, everything is not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's where it, that's where that true partnership and that love comes into play. It's like, yeah, when I'm always, it's easy in the easy times. Yeah. It's when it's difficult, simple. you need to be able to work through it. <laughs> and it's like a lot of people, they hit that, that one obstacle. It's like maybe 20 years later, they still are struggling with that one obstacle and ends up, you know, you hear about people getting a divorce after however many, you know, decades they've been married. Like, how did that happen? Could have been something from the very beginning that they never learned to work through. Yeah. 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 The, was something that y'all hit on that I really, uh, I liked was when you said, uh, Pete has to sometimes be like, whoa, you know, I'm on your team, right? Like I did not all of a sudden switch sides 
we are not now competitors. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> how long did it take you all to like understand that? Because I, I do think that sometimes can be the most difficult, especially like Marcus loves to call me stubborn. I mean, he might be a little right. Um, so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when he's on the opposite side of my idea, it can feel like, okay, so you just yeah. ain't, you ain't with me where it's not that it's not that his, uh, point of view of what, uh, that is in opposition to my point of view is in opposition to me. He's just trying to offer me a perspective that might be maybe truer maybe not he might be wrong but still it is sometimes yeah. hard to separate it's just like oh so now you might want me now we can't right right you take it personally <laughs> yes you take as a correction or something yes how long did it take for you all to be able to like figure that out of like uh or, or like pete that you that you had to be like okay i see what you think is happening in this moment but here's actually what i'm trying to do I mean, I, I feel like I've I've carried that through my life because I will I look at things for myself. I'd be like, okay, what's happening here? Okay, how can I change that? Or what was my part in that? Mm -hmm. You know, how could I have uh, you know done some Jedi mind trick to have a different result? And so I often, when I hear people when people share whatever thing is going on with them, I'm often like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 here's what you should do, right? And, and, uh -huh. and I know that- Very that, good at giving advice. And uh, I think that, you know, I know that that's not what everybody wants to hear because sometimes people just want to give voice to their, yeah, they want to vent. Yeah, you know they, they want they want to mm -hmm. vent, and so um, I think the I think it's kind of learning, you know, learning what that gas clutch equilibrium is. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then also that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then um, and then also being like, yo, so do you want to hear like some real shit, or do you uh, want to just because right. if you just want to just talk, I I just sit here and drink this yeah. burp. You know what I mean? But like, if you want to like have a conversation about it, I got thoughts right. and yeah. kind of like, you know, and so part of it is like being assessing yourself and then kind of learning to kind of, uh, well, you're not even learning, asking, mm -hmm. right? Like what, what are you looking for in this moment versus like trying to always be the deliverer of um, solutions? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of times, you know, like at least for me, a lot of times Angel realizes that if I come in with an issue, if it's an outside issue, it's like I feel a certain way and I'm mad, I just need you to be mad with me for a second. Mm -hmm. Like, let me dwell in this, let me simmer, yes. and let me get it out. Because otherwise, you know, I'm not good at just, all right, let me go meditate and let it go. No, it's going to stay in there until I get rid of it. I have to be like, if they did what? Like, oh, can you believe it? I'd like, be like, no, that's yeah. some bull. Well, in my the, mind, I have that, a solution in yeah. the back of my head that wants <laughs> to shoot out. And I know this now. Like, <laughs> maybe within the past, I don't know, three years, I discovered, like, yeah, just let me dwell in it. I realize it, it may take me a day to realize, all right, Marcus, uh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Oh. <laughs> probably shouldn't have grabbed that woman like that. Uh, <laughs> no woman, <laughs> just joking, I ain't grabbed no way. But at the same time, it's like, all right, I know how I am. Like Kelly, you were saying, you know, you just kind of go there. It's like, I know how I am. And I know, all right, just let me just get through. Just let me be here for a second before we take a step back and start playing chess again. Cause right now I'm like, check us. Let me just go do this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, you know, then the next day I'm like, all right, so, <laughs> so what, what we need to do? Who do I need to do? What, what's okay. your thoughts on so this? What was, you know? your, what was your real thoughts on this? I'm like, great. I had time to take notes. Let's go through it. Ba, ba, ba. Um, uh, so you guys. I can, I can answer this question on, on, on two levels actually. Mm -hmm. And the first is like the more superficial level, which is that, you know, he will ask me, um, you know, do you want to hear it? And I will be like, actually, no, I do not at the moment. <laughs> I do not. You know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to hear it right now. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> maybe I'll come back to it. Um, 
but you know, on a really, now I feel very vulnerable, but um, I, uh, I think I also er learned early on in our relationship um, that if it was, it, it was the, a, when I knew that he like really knew how to love me and, or he is just a loving person mm -hmm. and non-judgmental was when I finally was able to like go, oh my God, I'm so used to being criticized. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> because like that's sort of you know I, I like I, I I that was our family style I'll just put yeah. it that way a yeah. lot of criticism yeah. and judgment and and I'll never forget I had a friend in my 20s a roommate who was just like and I would do the same thing as Pete and just be like well I mean here's what you can do better next time and we're not like a robot like problem solving mode I mean not that you're a robot problem solver but that's how I was mm -hmm. and he once said to me like can't you just be on my side mm -hmm. and you know Pete made it very clear early on like he was like, I am, I'm on your side. I'm not judging you for this problem that you're having or, you know, this um, issue or whatever. But I, you know, I can offer you an objective or maybe not objective, but like I can offer you a perspective. Yeah. And that does not, it's, it's not criticism. It's not, and it's so... I, I heard him say that and I under I did understand that intellectually, but I do still have to, I don't all I know it more and more as time goes on. I can I know it in my spirit more and more that like, okay, I just I don't have to be this doesn't mean that I was bad at that thing. This doesn't mean that I failed at that thing. It just means that like here's another way of looking at it and here's what I can take to the next experience, the lesson or whatever. So um so, you know, it's, it's ongoing for me is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it ever stops. Like, I think it's part of, like we said recently, it's like the person I am today is not who she married. Yeah. And it's like learning and growing together and figuring that out. It's like, I have uh, learned probably over the past three, maybe four years, maybe over the last five years, gradually have learned how to love her more and better um to be more open um i know it's a lot of things a lot of men suffer from they don't know how to express their feelings mm -hmm. and being that angel that seems to be sometimes all she does <laughs> and it's like to hey. with me i yeah like i stopped fighting it it's like yeah i need to i can't get it'll be much easier for me to get past these emotions or get past this situation if i just try to say what is going on in here instead of trying to figure it out for myself yeah um yeah. Cause I don't emote. I express my emotions, but I don't emote. I I, or, I will articulate my emotions long yes. before I actually like show them. Uh. I am mad before you like really get to see me act out in my madness. So yeah, <laughs> it was nice to be able to have. Well, no, Marcus will show his emotions, but yeah. he then I'll show also... it before I even realize it. Like, oh, I guess I'm <laughs> mad. Like, yeah, <laughs> <too>. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you got an attitude. Oh, I guess I do. Uh, <laughs> well, Kelly and Pete, y'all have been such a blessing. And I will say, uh, I'm, I'll speak for Marcus, but you can add to it. You all's relationship from the outside looking in is kind of like what we would have wanted to have been doing. And then we just kept getting pregnant. So it's nice <laughs> to see a couple that's just out here, just taking on the world and traveling and doing beautiful bougie things without you know the only you you y'all got the dog so i i get that but i <laughs> we we have to say that even though you all are new to marriage you all are yeah. in a way goals like the the love that you all display yeah is this that i gorgeous. think is that uh what i've just in this sort of conversation that is be around you guys it's that level of intelligence that's making you excel to like making this marriage thing look like, no, they had to be get, been together for a bunch of years to figure this well, out, figure this much out in this short amount of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. it's like a true puzzle piece. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is, which is because the things that you all are saying that you've been through is like, like I said, we 16 years and over the last five, I figured That's this what stuff we out. figured this stuff out. And, like, and, uh -huh. and y'all figured it out in like three conversations. Like, 
Well, you know, we can just do as you write, you know? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> but y'all, y'all, y'all did it on the job. You know what I mean? Like uh, y'all had them on the job training. Yeah. We we was unemployed figuring it out. <laughs> so, then we finally got the job. We were like, I, I've been reading. I've been reading. I'm ready. I'm ready. That's a good. One. I read the books. I got my you guys are such an inspiration because overall, the, the length of time that you've been married, four children, y'all still have fun together y'all like enjoy being in each other's company and have clearly have dreams and ambitions for your future and y'all can't be stopped and it's just you you are truly you are goals for us too and you know knowing that like um hearing you describe and also seeing like just how much the love deepens over time gives us so much to look forward to so oh, thank you yeah. for being out oh. there in the space doing what you're doing Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank really you. Um, so I am sure you all already knew a lot about them, but I still want everybody to know where they can follow you. And I know Pete has a podcast as well. So if you all wouldn't mind just spitting off all your like social media where people can follow your, especially projects that you all are doing independent of what people know you all like for, please. Um, I am uh, on Instagram at C as in like view, S-E-E, -E, Kelly McCreary. And um, on Twitter at Kelly McCreary, I um, produced a film two summers ago, actually, that's available online. It's called A Cohort of Guests um, that you might like to check out. And um, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, a cohort of guests.com. And uh, take it away, husband. Uh, so what's up? You could check out me. That's not well said. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 P-E-T-E-C-H-A-T-M-O-N. Um, that's my Instagram handle and Twitter. Um, but for the podcast, you can get there, uh, via pchapman.com. If you go to my production company site, or you can go to, uh, director.video but that's director with no vowels so drctr.video um and we're dropping the podcast on wednesday um with a brother and friend of mine who wrote uh who writes on billions um theo travers and then um check out blackish episode 412 um where i got to direct angel and then uh <laughs> a typical episode 208 Thank you. Um, that's amazing where we did that as well so yes yes definitely check both out you one of the you are such a great director i hope you know that like you're one of, i've gotten luckily i've gotten to work with a lot but i love your style pete will have you thinking you really know what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> Too kind. Y'all just make me look good. I just show up and be like, do your thing. Do your thing. So as you all already know, you can follow this podcast on Is This Going to Cause an Argument mm -hmm. on Instagram as well as on Facebook. Please make sure you rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It makes us more discoverable. Yeah. You can follow me at That Chick Angel across all platforms. And you can follow Marcus at... Marcus ain't on the gram on Instagram and Marcus ain't on the book on Facebook. And then, um, and then you can find my beard and body butter. It's a hundred percent natural beard and body butter called man shit. That's M A N S H Y T at manshit.com. And you can go to the Instagram page at get man shit to see all four posts that I put up there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> all four, all four of them. Oh. But um, anyway, that's uh, yeah, you can oh, find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. You get it. Um, but we will be back next Wednesday with another episode of Is This Going to Cause an Argument? Uh, again, we want to thank our guests, Kelly and Pete. And we all will see you next time. Absolutely. Bye. That chick angel. Hey. That chick angel. Hey.